Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Darshan McAway. You're tuned in to WOW Podcast. By all means, go to wowpodcast.me. That's W-O-W-P-O-D-C-A-S-T dot M-E. Now, today we have a special guest. We have Jeffrey Carver. How you doing, sir? Fine, thanks. Good to be here. Now, we're going to talk today about the Chaos Chronicles. And in the Chaos Chronicles, we're also going to be mentioning the Reefs of Time and Crubicle of Time. Uh, so let's get started. What is the Chaos Chronicles roughly about? Well, um, it's a uh, an extended story of a, a man named John Bandicoot set uh, uh, a couple centuries in the future who uh, taken away, it's really an odyssey of have uh, his own and a company of friends that he builds over the course of his uh, adventures. He, uh, we start in the solar system um, at Triton, the moon of Neptune, that's in the first book, Neptune Crossing. Um, and he is um, taken away to a, a place called Shipworld out at the edge of the galaxy. And uh, this company of friends are all exiled from their home worlds. And they're facing forces that they don't really understand. They seem infinite and unknowable. And they're called upon to uh, to save worlds. And they don't really, they, they get volunteered for the job. They're thrown into these situations that they have to make the best of. Um, and in the new books, The Reefs of Time and Crucible of Time, um, they're confronting an ancient artificial intelligence that is traveling forward in time to the present uh, and threaten really not just the world they're on, but uh, all of the worlds of the galaxy. Uh, so Bandicoot and his friends Ick and Terry's, Lee Jared, and uh, a couple of robots named Copernicus and Napoleon uh, are... Uh, are forced to confront something that they really have no tools to deal with and uh, really, at the beginning, don't really understand what they're facing. So there's a lot to think about in the series, uh, but it's full of humor and interesting alien characters as well. So what was the idea for your covers? Well, uh, the covers on the new books were done actually by, and the artist's name is Chris Howard. He was a, uh, a writing student of mine who is a, an extremely talented artist. And those covers are actually pretty representative of the story. Um, the Reefs of Time uh, highlights um, um, a character named Julie who is actually, you know, it's hard to depict time travel um, in art, but uh, the cover really attempts to do that and to show the sort of fragmented uh, chaos that's happening in the story. So those are the most representative covers I've had probably, and I work very closely with the artist on that. Do you have any interest in turning your books into any type of sci-fi short film or a sci-fi movie? Oh, I'd love to see them turned into a um, movie. I think, it, I think the Chaos Chronicles would make an excellent uh, miniseries. Uh, or they could do what they did with Game of Thrones and take each book and make that um, a short series. Um, I, it's not my field to, to do, um, I don't have the ability to do it myself, but if a studio came to me, uh, they'd find me interested. So you're into space and time travel. What led you into the, what got you started with, with time travel and, and science fiction? Um, time travel just came into this, this last uh, series. As space travel was my my first interest, and this particular series um, came about. I, I had written a number of very long books uh, that took me a long time to write, and I was looking for something that would move a little faster. Uh, so I hit on this idea of a series of, of short books that would carry my character um, in a continuing story arc, but in in briefer. Uh, episodes. Um, but what led me to this particular story was a kind of a confluence of reading about chaos theory, which fascinated me, and reading about um, how chaos applies in the outer solar system where asteroids and comets and things are, are um, their orbits are affected by chaotic movements of other bodies in the solar system. And this is why sometimes we have comets and asteroids that approach the Earth. Uh, so I was uh, looking at the possibility of an asteroid through chaotic movements threatening the Earth. And this is not by itself a, a 
brand new idea, but I wanted this to be something that was reflected in the character's own uh, mind. So uh, I set him out on Triton and threw him into um, a relationship with an alien that seemed very unknowable and chaotic to him. So I was trying to work with chaos, and this is just kind of in the back of my mind as I came into the story, um, as both an internal thing that happened in his own psyche as well as the external events. That's what got me started. Got, got you. Now, what I'm going to do during this interview, I'm going to do some time travel, and we're going to, we're going to go all the way back to when you were a kid. Uh, when you were a kid, what did you think that you were going to be when you grew up? Oh, Lord. I thought I would work in the space program. Um, I grew up during the time of the Mercury uh, astronauts taking our first trips into space. And I thought working on rockets would be the coolest thing that anyone could possibly do. And then I wanted to be a scientist. Um, and I'm talking in junior high school and high school now. And I was fascinated by science classes. I loved reading science fiction. And I wrote my first couple of stories when I was, before I went away to college. Um, but there was a gradual evolution where I realized that the stories were really what grabbed me. Uh, I loved the science, but I discovered that I didn't really like doing science. I loved learning about it and and thinking of stories that reflected what I was learning. So at some point, I switched from wanting to be like a rocket engineer um, or an I didn't think I could be an astronaut because I wore glasses. And back then, all the astronauts were test pilots, and test pilots didn't wear glasses. It seems a little quaint now. Um, but I went from that to wanting to tell stories about traveling through space. So now that you are able to write stories about it, what was your approach? Did you decide to talk to a traditional publisher or did you decide to self-publish? Well, this was, this was uh, years before the self-publishing um, phenomenon existed. So I went the traditional route, which at that time was really the only route. Um, I submitted short stories to magazines and anthologies and collected rejection slips for a number of years. Uh, I started trying to sell my stories when I was in college, and I continued doing it for the first couple of years after I graduated from college. And um, eventually I sold a story, and I was ecstatic. And then I sold a second story. and. I wasn't really planning to start writing novels because I thought, well, at that time, the the wisdom was you um, build your career on short stories and then you grow into writing novels. But an editor wrote to me, wrote back, actually rejecting a story, but saying, I like your writing, um, but I I could, um, I'm working with a publisher that's developing a new line of books for new writers. Would you like to write a novel? And I can get you a contract. And I left at the chance and wrote my first novel based on that um, offer and discovered that I really liked novels better than I liked writing short stories. And um, for the most part, although I've still done some short work off and on over the years, it's been novels that have uh, occupied me, that really grabbed me, and I seem to have the best, I don't know, it works better with the way I think to sort of tell long stories. So with that experience of uh, being able to submit a manuscript and have an editor reach back out to you and say, hey, I like your writing, but, you know, would you be interested in doing this? Have you ever thought about teaching writing? Uh, I have taught writing in a fair number of um, different sorts of uh, workshops. I have taught a number of years at a young writer's workshop uh, that's held every year at Red Loaf in Vermont. Um I taught writing at MIT for one semester. I was, I was uh, pinch hitting for the regular professor, Joe Haldeman, who was out ill that year. So I, I taught undergraduates. I've taught my own writing workshop uh, with, with uh, one of my co-writers, uh, Greg Shaw Gardner. We ran a series called the Ultimate Science Fiction Writing Workshop in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And um, uh, just as as opportunities have arisen, and I also have an online course 
uh, just a free guide on the fundamentals of writing at writesf.com, which was really created for um, middle school students because um, I did a series of TV shows working with middle school students on the craft of writing. Um, but this this guide is available to anyone and just touches on the fundamentals of telling stories in fantasy and science fiction uh, and how to get how to get started. And that's at writesf.com. So where can the listeners go to learn more about you and also to purchase your up-and-coming books? My website is at starrigger.net. That's S-T-A-R-R-I-G-G-E-R dot net. Or they can just Google my name, Jeffrey A. Carver. Uh, you can look in any any of the uh, online ebook stores and um, Kindle Nook, Kobo, Kobo Books, Apple. Uh, my books are in all the all the stores worldwide. So, do you have any audio books with this series? I do. In fact, uh, I have over the last year been putting the entire series into audio book, working with narrator Stefan Rudnicki, who is a Grammy-winning narrator and has an amazing voice. And The Reefs of Time and Crucible of Time will be released in audiobook on uh, on many platforms um, this fall, uh, probably October or so, October, November. So look for them at your favorite audiobook store. Well, I'm your host, Darshan McAway. We're talking to author Jeffrey Carver. We're talking to him about his series, The Chaos Chronicles. We were talking about The Reefs of Time and Crucible of Time. Jeffrey, it was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you. It was good to talk to you as well, Darshan.